In the words of Chuck from Supernatural, endings are hard. Hi, I'm Kelly Martin. I'm a traditionally and independently published author of more than 30 books, and welcome to my channel. This is the fourth and last video in my How to Write Horror Novel series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned things. I hope I've not been like too repetitive. Um, I just hope it's been helpful. That's all I want to do is to be helpful. I hope it's working. Um, I've enjoyed making them. I've enjoyed sitting down and trying to figure out the nuances of horror. I've written 14 horror books in my time and I love it. I don't know why I love it, <laughs> but I do and I hope it's something you like and I hope it you've never written horror that you give it a try. It's actually really fun. Okay. This is the end. This is how to write an ending in horror. And like Chuck said, endings are hard. Endings are difficult. Have you ever read a book or watched a movie and it's so good and it's so good. And then you get to the end and you're like, what? Endings in any genre can make or break a book and I know I had recommended a book to somebody and they said Oh, is it really good? And I was like, well, it is and until the end <laughs> But I enjoyed it up to this part. So endings are really difficult and I have noticed a lot of times it's it's horror There's this big wonderful premise of a book or a movie we're gonna go with books and the build up the beginning is beautiful and then the middle is awesome and then the ending it's either too convenient or it's rushed and i understand i get it it's so difficult to end a horror book because it's so outrageous <laughs> it's so not normal that when you end something like that it's difficult it's hard so we're going to talk about some ways to end your horror book with a satisfying ending number one lay easter eggs all throughout your book so that when the ending happens the reader's like oh and then they go all the way back to the beginning to try to figure out how that happened and it's very satisfying and I know I've talked about laying Easter eggs and foreshadowing and subtlety all through this series. This is why, because at the end is the big payoff. Think about the movie, The Sixth Sense, okay? If you've not seen The Sixth Sense, I guess I should put a spoiler up here too. So, in the movie, The Sixth Sense, Bruce Willis plays a child psychologist. And there is a child who sees dead people. Throughout the movie, you see what you think is Bruce Willis interacting with all these people. Come to find out at the very end, he's dead and has been dead through the whole entire book. So how did we miss it? Because M. Night Shyamalan had little subtle clues that when you go back and rewatch it, you're like, oh, <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Of course he's dead. Kind of like, what is it, the others, but when the Cole Kinman, you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. And that is what I mean by giving subtle hints all through your book for a big payoff at the end. It makes your reader feel satisfied. It makes them feel smart if they figured it out. And it just makes them leave your book with a Ah, uh, I enjoyed that experience and hopefully give you a five-star review. <laughs> Number two, don't chicken out. <laughs> I know. Okay, we all want happy endings. We all want happy endings. If you ride horror, you don't necessarily have to have a happy ending. Remember when we went back to the tense video? If you ride in present tense, you don't necessarily have to let your main character live. It's just part of it. Think of how satisfying it is when a main character doesn't make it. Think about the Avengers in game. Just think about it. All these movies built up to that one scene. Just, just think about it. 
Number three, make it satisfying. Whatever that means to you or your particular book, I can only give you suggestions based on my books, but make it satisfying for the reader. Make sure that all of your foreshadowing has led to the end and make sure that somewhere along the line, you have foreshadowed something, even if it's a throwaway line. Throwaway line. I do this a lot. I'm sorry. Even if it's just a throwaway line to the very end, make sure that it's been in there. Let's take, for example, Breaking Dawn, the last book in the Twilight series. Okay. Spoilers if you've never seen Twilight or the movies. This is what bothered me about Twilight. I actually love the series, so. Hmm. What bothered me about the last book is they never mentioned the possibility of a vampire having a baby with a human until the fourth book. Had it been foreshadowed in the first book, maybe if Jacob's been like, you can't marry him because you could possibly have a baby, and that baby would be, you know, whatever. <laughs> that would have been a really interesting foreshadowing moment. Even if like in the movie when they had all those cuts to the websites that they had something about vampire babies. You know, as even a, a remote possibility, I think that would have made um, Breaking Dawn even better, let's say. Um, not hating on Twilight or Breaking Dawn. I'm just saying, if you're going to have a big reveal or a big plot point, you really, really need to foreshadow it as soon as you can. Now, sometimes if you're writing a series, you don't think of that plot point or the big reveal until you're three books in. That's fine. Foreshadow it then. Put in the throwaway line. And when I say throwaway line... I just mean a line that doesn't seem like it means anything until the very end when you're like, oh, that meant everything. That's what I mean by a throwaway line. I don't mean like it's literally a throwaway line that you could cut out of the book and miss. I mean a line that looks like a line that you could cut out of the book and miss, but really it's not. It's just a big major spoiler of the book of foreshadowing. That's basically what I'm saying. So, even like I said, even if it's the last book, and or you're in a series, you're in a five book series, you think, okay, I figured out how my series to end. Throw a throwaway line in the third book if that's the one you're writing. That's fine. That's totally fine. Just make sure somewhere along the way there's some kind of foreshadowing. So when the big major thing happens at the end. It's not, I don't know what. Disappointment's not the right word. It's not out of the blue. I guess that's the word for it. It's not out of the blue. It's not out of the question. You kind of have it in the back of your mind that this might happen. And, yeah. So, make sure you at least, at least give a reader that. Number four. It's okay, especially in horror, to end the story open-ended. That does not mean end on a cliffhanger. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, a lot of times, especially in horror, let's say this big thing happened, and your whatever main cast, whoever has survived, has survived, and they're together, that portion of the story's over. And let's say they're walking away toward the great unknown. It's like in zombie movies a lot, too. It's okay... To have the world not be perfect. It's okay to not know what's going to happen next with these characters. The main point is that part of the story is over. They are, I, guess, I think they call it a happily for now. The characters are happy for now. They have survived whatever it was they survived they got out of the laboratory they survived the vampires even though vampires are taking over the world they've done whatever they've gotten out of that situation intact now the world is still going crazy with that <laughs> the world ain't right <laughs> the world 
is falling apart. But for those characters, everything is happy for now. And it's okay to end with the characters hugging or walking down a road or whatever. As long as that part of the story is finished. And that's what I mean by open-ended. That situation is wrapped up. That's taken care of. But in the bigger picture of the world, it you don't really know what's going to happen next. But that's not part of this book story and that means you can either write a book two or you can just let the reader's mind wander to figure out what happens next and number five the last thing i want to talk about with endings is make sure they're not rushed a lot of times people spend so much time building up their story and so much time with the foreshadowing part then when the ending comes it just feels rushed Make sure you spend as much time or more on your ending as you did your beginning. You have so much to pack into an ending. You have a whole book. So you need to make sure that you're hitting the beats, there's things have happened, and that it doesn't feel rushed because there's nothing worse <laughs> or less satisfying then spending your time reading a whole big book and then the ending like wrap up or finish in like 10 pages because um like amazingly amazingly rushed and remember your ending is the last impression your reader has of your book it's the last impression the reader has of you and if you give a bad impression your beginning of the book can be wonderful, but it's the ending they remember. And if it's an ending that they enjoy and they give you four or five stars, it went three stars. Three stars, stars can be enjoyable too. Let's say if they give you one star. Let's say they enjoyed the experience, okay? It's not really about reviews. Let's say they enjoyed the book until the very end. The ending is what makes the reader, okay, Let's start all this over. The beginning of the book, your cover, your blurb, and your very first sentence, first chapter, is what makes the reader decide if they're going to pick up your book and read it. The ending is what makes a reader decide if they're going to pick up your next book. So don't rush it. Don't make it out to be some big cliffhanger if you don't have a series two or a book two coming out. Don't, and if you do, try to wrap up the first book, at least in a little bit of a bow tie. Um, make sure that it's a satisfying ending. Make sure that you have, if it's not a series, make sure you have covered all of your um, plot points and your beats and make sure that they are, they don't even have to be in a neat bow. Just make sure that they're addressed and leave the reader with the desire to want more of your books and to read more of your books and to follow you as an author okay that's my spiel <laughs> that's my series on how to write horror stories i hope you liked it i really do i'm really nervous i'm really nervous about posting it because like i said don't feel like a an expert. I just know what I know and I know what I've learned and I hope it helps you um, in some way with your writing uh, journey. Like I said, if you've not written horror before, I you should at least give it a, a try. It's really fun. It's fun to... I like puzzles. So paranormal and horror and ghost stories are really fun for me to write because I like putting the pieces together and trying to figure out how they end and how they foreshadow to the end. And I think that's really fun. And if you like things like that, I would encourage you to try horror. There's different types of horror, guys. You don't have to have... Some people like gory horror. If you don't like it, don't write it. Some people like ghost story horror. If you don't like it, don't write it. Some people like possession horror. If you don't like it, don't write it. It's up to you. There's Horror is a whole big umbrella of awesomeness. You can pick what part of it you want to go under. You can do middle grade horror. You can do young adult horror. You can do graphic horror if that's what you want to do. Just make sure that you have a mystery 
that you go through the book and that you leave the reader wanting to read more of your stories. That's it. That's this entire series. I hope you've had a great time. I've had a wonderful time making them. I can't believe August is over. I'm excited. I'm excited to read your comments. Like I said, I'm really nervous. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to subscribe. Hit the like button if this was anything you found enjoyable. If you've subscribed, hit the notification bell so you know when I make new videos. I make videos one to two times a week, usually on Monday. What did you think of this series? Was it anything helpful? Were you like, shut up lady, just hush. I have a second part of this with four more videos kind of planned out if it's something you would like. If if you don't, if you're like, we've had enough of you talking about how to ride horror, I get it. Y'all, I get it. It won't hurt my feelings. It's just something that I planned out in case you wanted to see it. That's all it is. Okay, I will see you in the next video.